Well, hello, that's me again. Today is Friday, uh, November 3, so happy Friday, if it is happy at all. And let me start with the correction. I actually made a mistake, and the mistake was not mathematical, actually. It was uh, basically reading, because when I translated the uh, statement of Mr. Lyankov, Colonel Lyankov, about the uh, armed forces of Ukraine losses, I misread the range as actually 65 to 80 percent. The reality is it was only 80 percent, so people who corrected me, thank you very much. Yes, you multiply 2 million of reservists by 0 0.65, then by 0 0.8, and you get above 1 million uh, uh, KIAs and uh, MIAs, and actually this is confirmed by the uh, cellular phone service companies in Ukraine because they have more than 1.2 million uh, basically users gone. They do not appear anymore. Their SIM cards are not operational. So, and things of this nature. So, and no, we are not talking about the people who ran away. So, for people to understand that, we are talking about the actual combat losses and losses related to the special military operation. And then, so we will go now and take a look at essentially what is continues to uh, uh, unfold, which is the. Uh, well, it is uh, ethnic cleansing and uh, wholesale war crime by Israel against Palestinians. Notwithstanding the fact that, of course, the, uh, Israel had the right to respond, but the way it responded now, it's turned actually in the, well, essentially a monster crime against humanity. And uh, right now we have the news, and again, I don't know how to confirm this, please don't ask me, so that yet another hospital has been bombed. So, you know, um, and then, of course, yesterday, while Brown and the news because I still have to address this issue. I cannot sit here and say that I'm not uh, <clears throat> uh, reacting to this. Seeing the uh, uh, Palestinian kids, especially little children, to toddlers, wounded, I mean, being absolutely just devastated by what is happening around them and not understanding what is happening around them. It's a heartbreaking issue for me. That yeah, would be uh, with any kind of the child, you know. So, but yesterday while browsing it uh, i uh, basically stumbled upon this and as you know uh, uh, you do not need to uh, actually trust everything up front but here we are some kind of like you know jpeg with the meme i thought it could be you know wrong it could be made up and here it is senator Juan holland uh, exposes the fact that israel has killed six times more children in gaza in three weeks than have been killed in the entire ukrainian ukraine war i thought hmm let me check myself if it is true. Well, guess what? I went to C-SPAN. I went to the uh, Mr. Blinken, the Lord Austin, uh, talking to Senate committee. And guess what? At exactly three hour mark, this is exactly what happened. Senator Van Hollen says this. And that brings us to the issue of why, for example, I constantly state that what Russia conducts in Ukraine is not real war, That w which gives you other kind of uh, reason for appreciate what Russians are doing militarily there. Why so? When you look at, uh, after you read what uh, and listen to what Senator Van Hollen, who is by far not the friend of Russia, says this, here we have this data now, which now is completely co corroborated by none other than Senator and actually the uh, Department of Human Rights of the United Nations. And look at this. What do we have? 563 days. Russians killed. Well, actually, it's not just Russians. It's very many of it is done by Ukrainians themselves, by Zelensky regime, by doing the false flag like Bucha and other places. But if you look attentively, the number of the civilian casualties is smaller in 563 days than in 25 days. Uh, since the start, well, now it's probably added uh, another horrible, you know, score of victims in Palestine by Israel. You see the difference? This is what uh, IDF was uh, called as the best, you know, army in the whatever their delusion they were living in. And uh, the point is now you see yourself what is happening in purely military terms inside Gaza Strip. And this is now just war crime. They kill civilians nonstop, like it was the Injabalia, uh, uh, um, Injabalia uh, camp 
which even Wolf Blitzer, the Nyakons, Nyakon and Warmonger, he had to be stunned when he, uh, basically the speaker of the IDF told him that, well, yeah, we had one of the, those guys there, so hell with it, you know, let's blow the whole thing, and yeah, 400 civilians, not biggie, we got the guy. So yeah, if you want to uh, fight like this, well, guess what? The world will react, and the world reacts, and I want to go immediately here to this thing, which... Um, even foreign affairs, uh, I have no respect whatsoever to 99.9% .9 of American foreign affairs scholars. There are, of course, exceptions, but primarily the Council for Foreign Relations is a, a basically circus, and uh, as I already stated, most of those people there are not real scholars, and they are unqualified to do anything in, rela uh, in regards to real uh, foreign relations. But even foreign affairs uh, actually is uh, writing now uh, uh, three days days ago that uh, why Netanyahu must go. After the war, Israel will need a two-state solution. He cannot deliver about Bibi. Well, guess what? Everybody now talks about two-state solution. My goodness. And now we have the situation which is even, oh my gosh, it's even more profound. And uh, before we go and discuss this, I want to uh, uh, basically point out attention to this. There was a lot of indignation and uh, saying that, oh yeah, Russians shouldn't be behaving like this. And I'm talking about one of the polls which have been uh, conducted inside Russia and most Russians neutral on Israel-Palestine conflict. The majority of Russians do not back any particular site in the Israeli-Palestine conflict and opinion poll published on Tuesday shows. And this is the poll for a form and 73% of respondents said that their personal sympathy lies with neither side, while 10% said they support Palestinians and 9 said that they favor Israel. So, and there was an immediate indignation. How could those Russians not support, you know, Palestinians and things like that? Uh, let me explain something which many people still do not understand. And this goes back to actually uh, American Constitution, Declaration of Independence and things like that. Government of the people and by the people. Russians are not supposed to, all of them, 100% to go out every day. By the way, Russia lives under non-stop sanctions and fights their special military operation, by the way, which has her own reasons to uh, actually pay attention to things which are more important to Russians. But they have government for that. They elect this government which does proper things from the moral and political point of view, or the geopolitical point of view. If you doubt it, so you uh, have to uh, actually discount this poll as absolutely insignificant. And guess what? Here we have the situation which explains to you why Russians have the uh, government of the people and by the people and they support everything they need uh, basically about this government. And here we have Mr. Nibenzia, the Russian high representative in the um, United Nations. And that's what he says. The Jewish state is an occupying power. Israel doesn't have the right to cite self-defense as justification for its military operations in Gaza because it is an occupying power. Russia's permanent representative to the United Nations, Vasily Nibenza, told an emergency special session of the United Nations General Assembly on Wednesday. Nibenza said that at, uh, all the U.S. and its allies can do is talk about Israel's supposed right to self-defense. However, he pointed out that as an occupying power, it does not have such a right, which was confirmed by a advisory opinion of the International Court of Justice in 2004. So there you go. All, every single individual Russian uh, is not supposed to run around, you know, and basically, you know, just proclaiming his uh, uh, or her uh, 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 position on uh, one side or another. You have the government. You have people, Russians, elect and support, actually, if you look attentively at the support by, of Russian government by Russian people, who do know what to do, and Mr. Nibenzia goes out and speaks about this openly. Not to speak, of course, about yet another IL-76, two of them uh, landing in Egypt with their uh, humanitarian aid for Gaza Strip, and things of this nature. So, as you might uh, understand,
sense there is no uh, grounds whatsoever to express any kind of indignation regarding the poll. Russian government does what it's supposed to do in this uh, under these circumstances and guess what I mean it basically manifests itself across the board of the political activity of Russian Federation on the outside world internationally so to speak. So but let's get us back to Ukraine and uh, uh, basically what has been uh, uh, what I already told you about the, this situation. Here we have this situation. Oh my God, Ukraine commander-in-chief in The Economist gives this uh, laughable interview. Obviously, there again, to understand why I'm laughing at it is because not only the Mr. Zaluzhny speaks a complete uh, military nonsense, you can sell this nonsense to, for example, British and British uh, magazines and journalists. Not that they do not do their propaganda stick, but most of them are stupid. I mean, basically anybody in the editorial uh, uh, staff of Economist or Financial Times or what have you, they are idiots, basically. They do not understand and what real uh, situation the world dictates, what it is, and especially none of them, including many people or who graduated Sandhurst Military Academy, have any clue what real war is and why Russia conducts special military operations. Uh, operation is about uh, as um, uh, opposed to uh, basically war, all-out war. And here's exactly. This is what Mr. Zaluzhny says: that he, we have reached the level of technology that puts us into stalemate. Well, thank you very much, because obviously stalemate is not the word to describe what is going on, especially when we look at the facts of now, uh, basically, uh, Ukraine registering 14 and 16 year old kids in the military commissariats and actually preparing to be drafted to the territorial defense. But let me show you the level of a British, uh, basically, uh, ac academy, uh, military expertise and um, all other the things uh, which you know basically now demonstrate British uh, intellectual level here it is as you can see yourself that's pretty much the embodiment of basically British military specialists British geopolitical specialists Academy and things like that that's their level that's how they have to that's what they have to stick to and not basically parade themselves at jackasses that's most most of them are and they are really bad hurt why they are bad hurt well let me put it this way uh, first, I'm not going to go over the Zaluzhny uh, garbage, which is essentially begging for um, the uh, whatever Wunderwaffe, as he, sa he says himself, we need some kind of magical technology. Well, sure, sure. But here we have even the Politica, which is, of course, you cannot forget about all those um, uh, neocon uh, outlets, but Politica being the uh, basically Democratic Party uh, outlet, even they have that uh, top Ukrainian general's gloomy view of Russia war fuels military aid debate. And as you can see yourself, it was done this published yesterday. A top Ukrainian general assessment that the war with Russia is a stalemate is fueling partisan passions as a debate on whether to bolster Kiev with more weapons royals Congress. Well, let me put it this way, of course, Zaluzhny as all his other operational strategic thoughts there are laughable and it is definitely nothing less than just uh, absolute begging and uh, inventing, confabulating reality. And when uh, you go over this situation, how these idiots still, uh, I mean, try to debate anything under the assumption that it is stalemate, I have the, you know, uh, I have to tell you, there is some kind of the dam, dam breaking in France. I just made the video last time about France and guess what? French continue to face the reality. They have Fr France 24 channel now talking about the disaster and then if this hasn't been enough, T5 um, um, Mond, uh, they get this guy, Mr. Uh, General Shaughnessy, or show and see, pardon me, and uh, you can easily find it, and actually that uh, uh, whole thing could be translated in English on YouTube. And then suddenly he begins to say things, which I love the comments uh, uh, below this uh, um, video by French people, and he's saying that what many people say that we've been telling this for a year and a half, and now suddenly people who were uh, telling us that Russia is about to disintegrate and lose the war, is actually they're telling us opposite things now. 
And let me put it this way, as I already stated, the uh, American, British, French, uh, German uh, 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 basically experience and competency in the modern war is, well, basically zero, zilch, and uh, especially in terms of the large-scale combined arms operation. But even Mr. Chauvin C, uh, uh, is the, well, however you call, uh, you know, the prefix in, in France, Monsignor, if you wish, or Signor, or what, whatever. Uh, so he's talking about that basically everything we, we ran them ourselves into the complete delusion, and that, of course, uh, the, uh, whatever they gained in terms of territory, uh, he is talking about uh, armed forces of Ukraine, they lost more because Russians advanced on other, uh, you know, uh, basically uh, operational axes. And now he is talking about that, yeah, their numbers of their uh, uh, basically casualties of uh, uh, armed forces of Ukraine are horrendous, and well, that's pretty much it. That it's over for uh, this so-called counteroffensive. I don't know how any military professional can call what uh, Ukraine was trying to do as uh, uh, counteroffensive. But here it is. Here's the guy who says basically it's over. Russia has always to de defeat uh, Ukraine the way it wants because yeah, there are a number of scenarios Russians can exploit. But as I already stated, and that's what many people in the uh, uh, combined West do not understand. This is all about fundamental discussion in Kremlin about not how to prosecute the war. Russians know how to prosecute the war. They have all means. It is about how much Russia has to take in terms of the uh, what is basically historical Russian territories and where should she stop. And there you go. We have Mr. Uh, Chauvin C, general of French army, talking about it. And not that anybody in French army knows how to fight the real war. The same goes for British, especially British. At least French maintain some kind of the uh, respectable force. And here we uh, come to what uh, basically uh, reaction to. Uh, the whole situation with this so-called counteroffensive, uh, as was expressed by none other than I already stated, Mr. Leonkov and other true military specialists and experts in the foreign relations. And here we have this uh, summary yesterday. Uh, planning to reach Crimea in four months, the armed forces of Ukraine and the British Special Services, who did participate actively in basically planning it. It's like, you know what, uh, asking British to plan military operation, or even asking Pentagon to plan military operation of this scale, is like me going uh, for the dentistry to auto mechanic. They do not know how to do it. They literally do not know. Uh, those 17 weeks, they prepare the officers in Sandhurst, and then they take them through the half a year or whatever, seven months uh, uh, routine into their... Um, in the, the uh, uh, General Staff Academy in London. I'm sorry, guys, Russian officers who graduate by the time they graduate uh, Academy of the General Staff, they have nine academic years and huge experience in commanding uh, uh, formations standing, uh, ranging from uh, 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 reinforced brigades, divisions, and even the armies. So, I mean, it's like, uh, you, you know what, Mike Tyson being the kid in the, uh, beating the kid in the sandbox. And here we have have this so uh, uh, also um where Mr. Lyankov talks about that they didn't take into account the degree of preparedness of Russian army. Of course, they cannot take it. They don't have any serious specialists uh, on Russia and they don't understand more than war. They none. None of them understand it. And they begin to say that and also the factor of defensive structures of the Russian Federation was overlooked. But in Ukraine, this was realized too late. M military experts Vadim Kazulin and Alexei Lyankov told the newspapers glad. Earlier, the commander in chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Valery Zaluzhny, admitted the impossibility of Ukraine's implementation of a deep and beautiful breakthrough. Again, all those academic pro pro uh, programs in the, uh, uh, you know, Leavenworth, Kansas, or in the General Staff College, or whatever, in uh, Great Britain, or elsewhere in NATO, are worthless, because basically, they do not understand what it takes from the combinations of factors, military factors, which bring you and marry your resources 
to your military operations. They have no experience with that. And here it is. They say that, you know what, uh, the plan to seize Crimea for four months was indeed developed by the armed forces of Ukraine with the support of British Special Services. It is quite possible that initially the strategy looked correct, but the enemy clearly overlooked some aspects. This led to a failure, said military expert, uh, expert uh, Alexei Lyankov. And it's not about for only fortification, it's about resources and how you manage them. And to understand how you do it, Russians have two-year war college academy of the rear and logistical services that means you graduate five years usually engineering uh, military academy and then you serve and you go into this war college which is called actual academy too and for uh, named after Khrulev, general Khrulev, the chief of the rear, uh, rear services and logistics during the uh, of the red army during the uh, um, great patriotic war you study there literally how to run this whole thing. And here is uh, how do you compare to the guy who actually has degree in uh, history and then he goes out through Sandhurst for 17 weeks and then suddenly you want the guy to plan anything? I'm sorry, guys. I mean, how about you getting back to school and st let's st start studying serious mathematics, serious physics, serious weapon systems and things of this nature. And when you have even amateurs like this, this in Russia, this is very uh, indicative. Also, the other amateurs, unlike Mr. Lyankov, these are not real uh, experts, but even they, reacting to the uh, Zaluzhny interview, present here the factors and uh, b basically uh, facts of the military situation, which is basically demolition, final demolition of the armed forces of Ukraine right now. And look at this, they make sense. They make sense more than any uh, French general or anybody else. And here it is. Zaluzhny did not come up with the plan of the counteroffensive himself. Its co-authors are Western advisors and officials from Britain and the United States, with whom the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine regularly communicates both publicly and privately. And here are the people who even not military in Russia, but still look at this. This is the difference. It's military culture against basically pseudo-military culture. In fact, NATO doesn't have enough experience to conduct large-scale battles. And the most interesting thing is that Zaluzhny had to admit this. In fact, he said the following. The alliance strategy is not working, said Alexander Artamonov, a military expert and NATO weapon specialist. He's not NATO weapon specialist. He's some guy with a humanities degree somewhere in France. But hey, even he gets it. He, evidently, people in Pentagon don't get it. People in the White House don't get it. Obviously, nobody in London gets it, including Sandhurst in their uh, uh, Imperial General Staff. And here what he says, as a consequence, NATO experiment in Ukraine has been a major failure. All the experience, the entire architecture of NATO is tailored to the implementation of individual mission limit, missions limited in time and space, which, as a rule, were carried out against weak armies that have neither experience no sufficient weapons. Finally, I've been talking about this for decades, that again, and as Mr. Klokotov uh, stated, this famous uh, uh, quote, throw away, I mean, these Gulf Wars until you base your military science, quote unquote, on those wars, you will, be con you will continue to lose wars. And it's kind of self-evident now. And here it is. However, against in, the, in, in this industrially developed power that is Russia, such experience turn out to be useless, even if we are talking about a large but still local theater of military operation. In a way, the soldiers of the armed forces of Ukraine had to train NATO instructors themselves who do not know how to conduct land operations without full access to the sea. Questions arose in everything, logistics, supply, safety margin of equipment under the constant load, and so on, the source lists. And according to the expert, NATO did not expect any uplifting movement, spiritual movement, from the Russian armed forces. Of course they didn't. They are taught in West Point that it was the United States which defeated the Germans which defeated uh, Hitler, which defeated Axis in Europe, and with some, you know, that, you know, uh, basically backward Ruskies who, well, slaughtered basically 80% of the creme de la creme of the Western Europe uh, or Axis, which have been thrown at them, the greatest invasion force ever assembled in history. But when you learn your military science on the Gulf Wars and on the complete confabulation of your military history, this is what you get. 
On the contrary, they believed that the Russians were only capable of the hamster revolt and would not resist. Also, they failed to correctly assess the capabilities of our weapons and industrial potential. Well, they beginning to say what I've been saying for a long, long time, wrote three book, uh, books and now write fourth the book, and we have to state that Western military and NATO military is simply incompetent. And that's what it is. I'm not talking about technological part of it, which, by the way, latest failure of the... Again, it's not the missile itself. Don't forget that with Minuteman 3, they uh, annihilated them already the bus itself. Six minutes after that, there was no missile really left. Evidently, missile itself worked properly. There's something happened with the body, with the, basically the vehicle, so which carries those MERS, multiple independent reentry re vehicles, the bus. Uh, why did they annihilate it? And this is yet another failure in the long, uh, basically, list of failures. I don't know, but evidently, well, there are some issues, okay? There are issues with nuclear deterrent. There are huge issues with military education in the West. It's useless. You have to understand, now we're looking at the completely, even, even Ukrainians say, they don't know anything. These are Ukrainian officers and Ukrainian servicemen said that they look at those Western advisors. They don't even understand how the real wolf fights, let alone they cannot uh, properly plan it on operational level, let alone strategic one. And what do you expect? And of course, you, what you expect is this uh, basically chaos now and hysteria and, you know, doom and gloom uh, <clears throat> being now present in the uh, White House and elsewhere in the Western world. Well, as I already stated, go back to a basic military schools start from the well generally combined arms manuals and learn how the real war is fought with the enemy who not only can shoot back but who is actually more technologically advanced than you are then maybe something will happen and then will finally what was my basically point of trying to deliver this message is to they will avoid doing stupid things like trying to provoke Russia uh, you know to war and then suddenly recognizing that oh my god we lost it of course you did so it's it was kind of predictable from the get-go and if this hasn't been enough obviously now they are complaining that oh my god we have this situation that you know and this is business insider it's it's a sewer but they are really important in the sense that they uh, publish a lot of uh, uh, things which are kind of min uh, minutiae but you know still important Close calls around the world show that Russian and Chinese pilots want betting practice against the U.S. top commanders say. And they complain that Russians actually <clears throat> behave themselves like in Syria and around Russia. Well, as they're supposed to behave, they show the intention. You want to fight with the Su-35S? Good luck with that. <clears throat> and again, they do it in the close quarters, like, for example, fodder from U.S. MQ-9 over Syria in July 2023. They will follow you. Russian air defense is the best in the world by far and the same are Russian detection means an ISR complex which allows them to intercept any kind of the air assets of NATO and sure but of course Russians themselves are shooting back in terms of saying that actually US Air Force in, special, in uh, Syria is doing their own part in being aggressive which is kind of yeah that, that's what people do they basically turn on their right radar and lock on a Russian aircraft and so they to show that yeah we're about to shoot well good luck try to shoot it down see what happens after that but the point is that yeah we're looking at a complete disaster complete catastrophe across the whole uh, thing with the miscalculation of uh, by basically military political elites in the united states who have no clue what they're dealing with they are that incompetent and uh, as i already stated uh, most uh, american generals wouldn't be allowed to command freaking regiment forget about brigade or division in the under the conditions of the special military operation let alone if it goes to the real war they won't know what to do they do not understand how it in interacts they do not understand how systems works uh, work and as the result we have this meanwhile while those guys miscalculated naturally about russia russia obviously just produced this other wonderful thing which is of course they launched IL-96 uh, 400M uh, which uh, conducted its first flight as you can see yourself here it's a beautiful beautiful airplane <clears throat> 
and its uh, future mainstay of Russia wide body aircraft. Here you can see itself uh, this with its four inches of uh, PS 90A1. It might get the PS 90A3, well, still remaining four motor configuration, but it is uh, until the PD 35 engine is done and which is coming and the wing is redesigned and uh, basically it will be able to uh, flying on those two high powered you know high bypass turbofans to reach above 10,000 kilometer range currently it's uh, uh, 8,100 uh, 8, something which is still enough to cover all Russia but then it will be a direct uh, competitor to other um, uh, western aircraft and uh, as you might expect it is completely 100% Russian made from avia to systems to APU to everything and it works for Russia now and eventually it will come out as the white body aircraft for <clears throat> other um, customers who would decide to basically buy it uh, and not to be threatened with the sanctions because it's completely Russian made aircraft 100% so well yeah that's your you know the retired Russia you know which kind of uses their uh, chips from washing machines and refrigerators I don't know so and uh, this is uh, basically this is their sentence how you gonna even communicate with those people how you gonna convey to them that what is going on they they better do something about it until it's too late and <clears throat> to close this today here we have Mr. Medvedev and Mr. Medvedev is when he speaks you better listen to him in terms of he is the uh, basically the deputy of the chair who is Mr. Putin of Russia Security Council uh, look what he says four days ago and I totally agree with him that why it explains to people why I still separate for example United States from Europe for all crimes and for all failures of the United States there is a different things in the world and the world operates on the still whatever anybody says it operates on the big guys and there are only three of them right now United States Russia and China who really want to rearrange the world and United States is incapable now to maintain any any kind of its supremacy in any field and here we have that's what Mr. Medvedev says sooner or later Russia and the United States will agree on how to live in the foreseeable future in the new conditions there is no point in starting a full-fledged conflict but Europe will soon be gone this is uh, what I'm talking for many years uh, relative geopolitical autonomy he says in his opinion the EU does not have independence in its actions even in Europe obeying Washington and London in everything the EU has squandered its international authority as mediator in any conflict and very fraud and of course then uh, he cites the lack of strong world-class leaders who are able to defend the interests of their countries although they used to be charismatic angry toothy now there are only sexless Macron Scholz and other Ursus with pipes and this is what he's talking about of course including the fact that Europe is now cut off the Russian stream of um, uh, carbo uh, uh, hydrocarbons which are crucial for, uh, energy is crucial for uh, European economy and yeah it's it's fading away so and uh, when you consider this you understand that there it's not everything is up into your face as it seems there's a lot of things and a lot of hustle actually behind the curtain and we only can hope so that even Mr. Biden and United States now tries to hold Israel back because well you know what Biden well he already committed to war and his administration they already committed a war crime in Ukraine they don't want to probably another war crime which is too late anyway to be associated with them but it's all it already is because United States is the main curator of Israel while Israel basically manipulates the United States and here we are and we have the tragedy in Gaza Strip and we have the now final stages of demolition of whatever is left from the armed forces of Ukraine well good luck supplying them with whatever uh, Germany already gave 25 tanks additional leopards they will burn as well as any other leopards and guess what uh, I think so Russia should stop yeah communicating with Germany there's nobody to talk them to them there so and this is what I wanted to tell you today guys and as always those who like what I do please subscribe to my channel or buy me a coffee too on you know uh, or support me on patreon those who can afford it and that will allow me to do what I'm doing
And what can I say? I wish you a good, happy weekend, hopefully. And I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye.